The American flag has 13 stripes and 50 stars. You know how I know that? Because Pocket Ronnie helped me with my numbers. Okay, we're going to be doing transversals and parallel lines today. Here I have two parallel lines. And then this line that crosses them or cuts them is called a transversal. Transversal just means it goes across. When you have a transversal going across two parallel lines, you've created one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight angles. And we're going to be talking about what these angles make. Okay? When you have your parallel lines, then you have you have created interior angles. Interior angles are these angles inside the parallel lines. Angles 3, 4, 5, and 6 are interior. They are inside. They are inside the parallel lines. Okay? Or you create exterior angles. Exterior means exactly that. Angles that are outside the parallel lines. 1, 2, 7, and 8 are exterior. Okay? So, let's go to um, talking about then alternate interior. When you alternate something, looking at this word, alternate interior angles. When you alternate, you're going from one side to another, okay? So, if you want to be on alternate sides of the transversal, you start out on one side and then you go to the other side of the transversal. So, when we talk about alternate interior, we're looking at only interior angles, which we said interior were 3, 4, 5, and 6. But to be alternate, you need to be on opposite sides of the transversal. Angle 3 is on the opposite side of angle 6. So angle 3 and angle 6 are called alternate interior angles. So angles 3 and angle 6 are alternate interiors. They are inside the parallel lines and they are on opposite sides of the transversal. Angles 4 and 5 are also alternate interior. They are inside the parallel lines but opposite sides of the transversal on the alternating sides. So angle 4 and angle 5 are also called alternate interior angles. Now let's look at alternate exterior angles. And by the way, alternate interior angles are congruent. Angle 3 and angle 6 are congruent. Angle 5 and angle 4 are congruent. Alternate exterior angles are also congruent. So let's look at the exterior on the outside of the parallel lines. We said 1 and 2, 7 and 8 are on the outside of the parallel lines. So if we want alternating, we want opposite sides of the transversal. 1 and 8 are on the opposite sides of the transversal, but they are outside the parallel lines. So angles 1 and angle 8 are called alternate exterior angles, and they are congruent. So angle 1 and angle 8. Angle 7 and angle 2, they are on the outside of the parallel lines, and they are the opposite sides of the transversal, so they are called alternate exterior angles. Angle 2 and angle 7. Now let's look at corresponding angles. Corresponding means um, they fit together. If I was to take this picture, this whole line, and scoot it down to this one, which angles would lie on top of each other? Do you see that if I took this whole picture and scooted it down, angle one would lie on top of angle five. Angle three would lie on top of angle seven. Angle four would lie on top of angle eight, and angle two would lie on top of angle six. These are all called corresponding angles, meaning that if I took this top line and scooted it down here, 1 would be where 5 is, 3 would be where 7 is, and so forth. So we can say that angles 1 and angle 5 are corresponding, angle 3 and angle 7 are corresponding, angle 2 and angle 6 correspond, and angle 4 and angle 8 correspond. Corresponding angles are congruent. Angle 1 is congruent to angle 5. So with that, with creating these angles, we can make some postulates. A postulate is just an observation. So here is one postulate, just one, there's many we can say from this. One postulate we can say, 
If two parallel lines are cut by transversal, because that's what we did, then corresponding angles are congruent. When we cut our lines with the transversal, we created corresponding angles, we created alternate interior angles, and we created alternate exterior angles. So this word right here, corresponding angles, could be replaced with alternate interior or alternate exterior. Because corresponding angles are congruent when two parallel lines are cut by transversal. If two parallel lines are cut by transversal, then alternate interior angles are congruent. If two parallel lines are cut by transversal, then alternate exterior angles are congruent. So those are some different postulates we can say from this lesson. Okay, the one thing that every postulate has a converse. If you notice, we have an if then statement. If something, 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 then something. We are proving something. If two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then we're proving that corresponding angles are congruent. You can say a converse or the reverse of that. All the converse is, you say the last part first, and then you say the first part last. It's still gonna be an if, then statement. So we want to say the last part first. So now we're gonna say if corresponding angles are congruent. So we say the last part first, if corresponding angles are congruent, then the lines cut by the transversal are parallel. In the first statement, we were proving that angles were corresponding and that they were congruent. In this part, we are told we have corresponding angles that are congruent and we can prove that those lines are parallel. So for now, we're just going to be practicing saying the converse. Basically, all you're doing is saying the last part first and then the first part last. Okay, we're going to be looking at problems on 7D. D is in dog. Here's the figure. Look at the givens. The given says that RS is not parallel, this is parallel symbol, to VT, meaning RS is not parallel to this one, okay? That's clearly seen on the board. The other given that they give us is angle one is congruent to angle three. I recommend you mark them in your picture. You can mark congruent by these little arcs meaning the same sim using the same symbol, okay? This shows that angle one is congruent to angle three. So since these are congruent, that gives us some piece of information. What kind of angles is one and three, okay? If I was to take this picture and scoot it over here, can you see that angle one will lie on top of angle three? For angles that lie on top of each other, what kind of angles are those? Those are corresponding, okay? Since angle one is congruent to angle three and they're corresponding, we now know that the lines are parallel because you can only have parallel lines, or you can only have corresponding angles if you have parallel lines cut by a transversal. RS, this is our transversal. And then RV, these are our parallel lines. In my picture, it doesn't look very parallel, but we are, RV and ST are parallel. These two lines going up and down are parallel. This is my transversal. And I know this because of this given information that angle one is congruent to angle three. Because the postulate, if uh, corresponding angles are congruent, then the lines cut by a transversal are parallel. Since we have corresponding angles that are congruent, that tells me my lines are parallel. All right, now let's look at our problem. Now that we know which lines are parallel and which lines are the transversal. So number one says, if angle one is congruent, that's congruent symbol, if angle one is congruent to angle three, then RV is what to ST? We just said those two lines are parallel. There's my parallel symbol. So number two, that's angle S. Actually, that should be angle five. It looks like an S, sorry. Angle five, letters in geometry are the points. The numbers are the angles. So all my angles should be numbers. Angle 5 is congruent to which angle and they want the corresponding one. So basically they want to know which angle corresponds to 5. 
We're not going to go from here down to here. You can't because these lines are not parallel. You can only go from here to here. You have to scoot over to the lines that are parallel to each other. So we go from this way to this way. So if I took this picture and scoot it on top of this picture, angle 5 lines up and sits on top of which angle? Number 7. So angle 5 and angle 7 are corresponding to each other and they are congruent. Now number 3, angle 6 is congruent to which angle and we, want, we are wanting alternate interior angles. Remember, these are our parallel lines, not these. These. So we're going from this picture to this picture. So we want interior. If these are our parallel lines, we want ones that are inside the parallel lines. 2, 6, 3, 7 are inside the parallel lines. We want alternate interior. So we want one, something that is opposite of 6, which would be 3. 6 and 3 are both interior and they're on the opposite side of the transversal because this line right here, this is my transversal. That's my transversal. So 6 and 3 would be alternate interior angles. Okay, now we want angle 5 is congruent to which angle and we are wanting alternate exterior angle. Okay, so remember these going up and down this way are parallel. So we want outside the parallel lines which would be 1, 5, 4, and 8. So we're starting with 5 because that's what the problem is asking. So we want outside the parallel lines and we want one on the opposite side of the transversal, the alternate side, so that would be four. Five and four are on the opposite side of the transversal and they are outside the parallel lines, so they are alternate exterior angles and they are congruent to each other.